like a cry for help. Got some bearing wine right here. We're gonna be changing the bearings out on this ball door motor that's inside here. This uh, special exhaust fan here for our kitchen. So let's get started. All right, so I got the motor out of its uh, bracket here, slid it over onto this step ladder that I got from Lowe's. This thing can hold 300 pounds. Perfect for like a little bench to work on something like this. So we just need to take off our um, shiv here. Once we get the shiv off, we can bust the end bells off. I like to do one at a time. So let's start on the first one and then do the back one. Um, but check this out. It's a good way to check if you have uh, bad bearings, um, just take the belts off and just spin the um, your shaft here freely and just give it a listen. I wonder if you can hear that. Yeah, those. shaking this a little bit and you can also see there's oil actually not oil it's grease sorry grease coming out now these have zerks but I bet money these bearings are sealed in here so we'll crack it open and we'll see So we need to get this shiv off before we can take the bells off. Just to show real quick, these are are both adjustable. So this is an adjustable shiv and to take the shiv off the shaft here, the set screws are in between here in the adjustment. So we have to adjust this back one outward to get to set screws in between so you just have to remember where your adjustments at and then also when you're pitting the shift back on how far you're pitting on the shaft of course you need to line it up with the straight edge to the other pulley here for your belt alignment so I have two threads on here and I have two threads on the back so they're both the same for the pitch here so I'm going to adjust this back one because that's the one I need to adjust to get to the set screws in here. That way I can loosen it. So now you can see it's far enough to where I can get to the set screws in here.
that. some penetrating oil in here to help loosen up in between the set screw and the pulley Close this all the way and then let's go ahead and put the claw on here. You want to make sure you're good on each claw on the pulley. And you just kind of tighten my hand. see some of the oil got on here to help just loosen it up a bit just make sure you don't lose your keys there make sure you don't Lose your key, your set screws in your key. There go. And then we're gonna clean this up. I like to kind of do a prep clean before I take the bell off. That way it's not spinning a bunch of shit in here when you're cleaning it with the uh, brush. So I'll just wipe it down real quick with a rag and then I'll start cleaning it around, getting this nice and clean. Then I'll start taking this bell off all right got the shaft nice and smooth there is a small indention right here from one of the set screws on the shiv I think it'll be all right it's not too rough I tried to get it as flat inside with the can as good as I could with the uh, with the brush here so we'll see I got it nice and smooth, clean. So let's go ahead and take the bolts off. Make sure when you pin these back on that you have your um, eyelets here for your lift. For if you're roping or using a crane, these are gonna be your, your pull uh, anchors here. So you just wanna make sure that you pin them on each end when you put these bolts back on. That'll be a little bit later, but just don't throw them away, basically.
Yeah, see how this bolt came out fairly easily? This one's not. It's almost like maybe this shifted a little bit. It's kind of in at an angle. These are not strong at all. Had a few motors where these rods here snap and pieces of it fall down into the windings and then boom, you got it short. Feels very light too. It's, it doesn't really feel like steel. Yeah, that just slid right out. This one's not. Don't like that. One bit. right up. This one doesn't. Alright. So let's go ahead and pop the bells off. Start on this one first. You bastard.
get it off the bearing sections there. Stupid. It's getting caught on something. Looks a little bent. I'm trying to see when I put it back in. Okay. Front bell off. Two. Your dust shield right there. Just want you to see something real quick. So this. is a shielded bearing meaning the shield is still on it is sealed the bearings aren't open to allow grease to get into the bearing to maintain the grease inside the bearing pack you see there's a ring of grease on the outside of that in here you have a ring of grease which is sitting in here Now these have Zerk fittings on them, see when they're here, but there is no relief plug, meaning you can pump, pump and pump and pump grease in here, and it's got nowhere to go unless you have bearings open to allow grease to fill into the bearing pack but then after a while you keep pumping more and more grease it's got nowhere to go it's gonna find itself coming bypassing the bearing then it's gonna go inside your windings and then you're screwed now you can leave bearings sealed like that there's a lot of motors that run on sealed bearings but in this case it's got a zerk fitting someone's gonna come up here they're gonna think you need to grease it they're gonna start greasing so we need to remove the shield on the new bearing that way when someone wants to grease it and they start adding grease it's not the grease will go into the bearing but if you over grease it and over time you keep doing that since you have no relief it's going to bypass that bearing and it's going to make itself inside the motor sometimes it's it's a hit or miss because you have no relief to relieve the excess grease out of your hub here I mean this motor is only like 3 years old and I'm giving it life at three, it could be a little over two, but it's it's still a new motor. It's not old at all, and it's already needing new new bearings. So these bearings that are in here are from Korea. You know, I, I feel like Baldor is. Losing its quality control on uh, bearings. They're putting crappy bearings in motors, and that's 
why we're seeing less life out of them. That's just my opinion. And then the bearings I got. Are these which are made in Japan. And I never had issues with these bearings. So let's pull the bearing off. I need to get the bearing heater up here plugged in, ready to go. That way I have the new bearing sitting, heating up, and then I can slide it on and I'll clean up just a little bit right here. And we'll, we'll go from there. And I'll just kind of clean a little bit up here here. This grease is still really good. I'm not going to go and remove it all out. Just add a little bit in there. That way I'm going to put it back on. And you pump in new grease. It's already going to kind of pump this grease into there. And Alright, let's take the bearing off. So we're gonna take this bearing off now. I got my OTC three claw adjustable bearing puller, pulley puller, shift puller, whatever you wanna call it. I like this a lot. I use this majority of the time. I like that it's got three holes here that you can adjust the arm lengths. You can actually take one of the it comes with another leg so you have four but you can take off one and you can only have just if you need just two that's a great puller uh, especially for smaller smaller little motors like this one if you have a bigger motor you don't want to get the bigger OTC uh, puller which I don't even know why I brought this. It's way too big. But this one's for bigger, bigger boys. Got our bearing on our cone heater here. Warming up. Got the shield off. This cone is um, is a conduction heater, so as it sits on each different level level of cone for your size bearing, this thing is heating up. That's causing this bearing to heat up and expand. You need expansion so you can slide it over the shaft. I've used this cone heater before in some other videos I have. I really like it. It uh, hasn't let me down yet. Worst comes to worst, if you can't get this cone heater for bearings, or say this one craps on me, you can get a cheap little, basically toaster oven. As long as you can get it up to, I'd say 400 uh, degrees, you're good. Um, on a small little one that you can, you can probably go pick up from Walmart or something, really cheap, maybe a 99 cent store. I don't know about 99 cent store, I don't know if that, but. Uh, just a small little cheap um, little uh, toaster or a, a small, you know, bake machine, whatever. And like I said, as long as you can get up to 400 degrees, I don't know how long it'll take. Usually, like on a little cheaper one, it might take a little longer to heat up the bearing. This one, I've only, I probably had it on for maybe five minutes. Now I can already kind of smell it. And uh, I know from right there, it's, it's already getting pretty hot. Um, but those small little toasters, uh, you know, they will work if you need it in a pinch. Um, this little tool it comes with, basically it's like this chalk or something. And basically what you do is it's going to melt 
at a certain temperature. And what I do is I slide it on there just a little bit. You can see I already got little small marks right there. But if it melts this pretty good to a liquid, then I know this bearing's pretty, pretty toasty and ready to go. Usually I don't let it sit more than longer than longer than 10 minutes because it's usually ready to go between that time. It comes with these nice little gloves. You don't burn your damn hands. Yeah, don't wear something like this. I'll probably burn the plastic on your your skin. So let's go ahead and take this bearing off real quick. Another thing um, for taking off the shield, I suggest using this little yellow jacket pick. This is for your gaskets, but it's got a nice little curve. And a sharp point that way you can get in between the shield just kind of pry it up a bit and then once you get a good lip up on it you can just get small little channel locks or needle nose and just from there you can pull it off and it comes right off but this thing gets back in there nice and good Gotta line this up, make sure you're straight. You gotta do it with two hands. Sometimes you gotta adjust this back one as you're tightening. Make sure your claws are gripping behind the bearing. And it just kind of it's gonna pay a lot of tension then once it pops off it will kind of maybe break loose that's because it's popped the bearing off and the tension is basically not tight anymore as it should See, this, this one already came off I gotta readjust it That's all you gotta do. And this guy will come right off. Bearing doesn't feel too bad. If anyone wants to know what type bearing this is, the brand is FAG. Okay, so let's clean this up. And then we'll slap the new bearing on real quick. 
Let's check if the bearing's ready. See that? Just liquefies. We know the bearing is ready. So, pick it up, slide all the way to the shaft, hold on to the bearing for a couple seconds. I say probably about a minute. Let go. Worst comes to worst. Bearing's not gonna slide all the way to the shaft. Two things, you can tap it on, or you can pull it back off, start over. But, let's hope it goes all the way up. Just like that. See a little bit of smoke because she's cooking. Alright, we'll let that uh cool down a little bit and clean that up. I'm actually just gonna put new grease in there. Got my grease gun, put a little bit of grease in there. Then we'll pop the bell back on, and you got to do the back one. Leave the bearing heater on. That way we get the other bearing, put it on, and be ready to rock. All right, clean us up a little bit. Hit new grease. Flushed out. You got about I don't know, two inches. Of old grease that was in there purge that out with fresh chevron grease i like the chevron grease works pretty well we're gonna put this bell back on we gotta do the back one bearings nice and tight on there let's find our markings Minyar Thor's hammer. It's gonna kinda give it a little bit of wacky whack. See that back side's coming out, it's okay. I want to line these up as good as I can. There you go. Got these lined up. Okay. Let's flip it around. Now, let's take the back bell off. You can see I already got my markings there. That's good. So now, let's just... Kind of whack at an angle. She pops right off. If you're noticing a mistake I just did, I left the shield off. So I'm gonna have to pop this one back off and put the shield back on. 
which is a dust shield. So, let's go ahead and just get this one off. We'll put this one back on and I'll have to take the front one back off. No biggie. As you can see this back one, it's got a retaining ring in there. Not a lot of grease like the front one did. Let's check our bearing here. Got a little bit of play. I can feel it a little bit. Yeah, it was a little rough, so it looks like there's more of this back bearing. And I'm noticing. This is an FAG bearing as well. But this one says Portugal. Bearing made in Portugal. That front one was made in Korea. Don't know about you, I don't know if it matters. But I'll throw my bets on the Japanese bearings all day of the week. Because we all know stuff in Japan, quality wise, is way better than everything else. So, let's get the bearing off. I'll put the new bearing on the heater, get it warmed up right now actually. Take this one off and we'll slide the one back on. We get this button up pretty quick. Alright, let's go ahead and pull this one off. We'll just use the little one. clean already let's put the bearing on Got a little toasty there. Let's go and just pull it for a little bit. All right, got the motor back in in its spot. I mounted just the bolt right here and one in the back. I haven't locked in the, the shiv yet because I want to make sure the alignment's good. So how you check alignment, get a straight edge, four points of contact on your pulleys or shivs, it should line up. You can 
see, that's not, it's off a little bit. It needs to come towards me. And that's touching up there. So I'm gonna scoot it a little bit towards me to get it lined up. Then I'm gonna lock it down. And then we're gonna fire it up. See how it sounds. All right. Motor's fired up. Sounds pretty good. Check the uh, belt tension already. Got the pulleys lined up. Uh, it should be, everything's mounted. Electrical's wired up, obviously. Going in the right direction. Well, yeah. That's pretty much it. Good to go on this one. All right, see you in the next.